On today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to install our power supply conversion kit for the Ender 2 Pro. Now this video is going to show you guys how to replace the PCB that's inside the metal housing on your Ender 2 Pro power supply. Because Crowley decided to make this power supply part of the printer's frame, it requires replacing the PCB that's inside the power supply housing to change it out to a different brand. We're going to be taking the Changlang PCB out of the stock metal enclosure and we're going to be taking the PCB from a Meanwell LRS series and transplanting into there. This will allow us to have a more stable power and something that's far more reliable than the stock power supply that many users have had issues with. Before we get started, you're going to need some Allen keys to take the printer apart. If you have a crimp tool, I'd highly recommend getting one. We do include fork terminals that you can crimp onto the AC lines that are in the stock power supply. While you could strip the wires and put them under the screw terminals on the replacement PCB, I highly recommend taking the time to crimp the ends on as it provides a more secure connection. So let's go through start to finish. I'm going to take the printer apart, take the power supply apart, show you how to install all the new guts and put it all back together. So let's get to it. So the first step to getting to the power supply is we have to remove this plastic housing here that has a control board and there's a couple of screws. So we're going to take these two screws out, these two side screws here, and the two screws on the side here. Now this whole unit will slide off. Now to get the power supply off, take these three screws out. And then we're also going to need to remove these two. As you can see here, the power supply is now loose. And you can see the power supply and the control box are off the printer frame. The wires connecting the power supply to the control box are right here, and we have to flip this over and detach these from the motherboard. Go ahead and take this bottom cover off. There's one, two, three, four, five, six screws you can see here. And there's actually two under the feet. If you notice here, I've actually poked holes in the feet so I can get access to them without having to peel the feet off. Take the cover off, but do not pull it off all the way because there's a fan connected. Unplug that from your control board. Go ahead and unscrew the two main power inputs coming from the power supply. And you're also going to need to unscrew the ground wire, which is on the standoff here. You can see here the wires are free. Clip the zip ties holding the wires to the enclosure. And now we have our power supply unit. Now to get inside here, we're going to remove these two screws here on this side and the three screws on this side. Go ahead and lift the cover off. And as you can see here, this is the original power supply board. We're going to take this off and we will use the new wires included for the positive and negative that come with the kit. And then we're also going to use the wires that are already here for the ground line and neutral to go to the power supply terminal. Take the little wire grommet off. Cut the heat shrink. Now to get this stock board out, we're going to have to undo the screw here that holds the MOSFETs to the casing. 
and the other one on this side as well. Take the little clamp out of here. Do the same for this side. Take the two screws off that are holding the board in, right here and here. And the PCB should come out. I would recommend staying away from these capacitors when you're on the bottom, because these could still have charge in them. The old board is gonna lift out like this. And go ahead and snip the line in the neutral wires going to the old power supply. And now we have the old power supply board removed from the housing. Now we have to disassemble the PCB from the meanwhile that we sell. And we're gonna transplant this into the case. If you notice, the screw holes for the MOSFETs on this line up perfectly with the stock one. So let's go ahead and disassemble this power supply so we can get the PCB out. Now, disassembling this will probably void your Meanwell warranty, but this is the only option we have to use the stock housing with this printer because Creality decided to make this proprietary. So to disassemble this, we're gonna take out this screw here, and this will release the top cover. So we're gonna take the screw out right here, and the ones holding the MOSFETs to the case. Take the PCB out. Now that we have the PCB out, we're gonna install it into here. We will want to strip these and put these into the screw terminals here. I would highly recommend that you also crimp a little fork terminal on the end, and if you get the full kit from us, it will include fork terminals to attach here. Before we put the power supply board in, we're gonna to need to crimp the ends onto these wires, and we do include fork terminals. You're just gonna need a standard wire crimper and strip these wires to put them into the terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip these and crimp these on. I like to twist my wires before I put them into the crimp end. Make sure you don't have any stray wires laying about. If you do, twist them into the main wire. Put the end on, make sure it goes all the way in until it stops and then hit it with your crimper. Make sure it stays on there. If you guys do not have a crimper, I have a link to these in the video description. These are actually one of my favorites. All right, so we got our wire terminations done. We're going to need to use the included cover and put that over this post here because this is not used on the meanwhile board. I'd also recommend setting your power supply voltage. You can see this comes set to 230, so I'm in the US. I'm gonna set this to 115. So now we have the ends crimped on here. We're gonna go ahead and cover this post right here with the included cap. And now we're gonna put the board into the housing. Make sure when you put it in that you don't accidentally fold this plastic cover underneath the PCB. It should come up the sides like it does now and go ahead and put it in at an angle. Slide it up. We're gonna take the screw that we took out of the stock board and put it into the grounding hole right here. And now we need to attach the leads from our receptacle to the actual screw terminals here. We can figure out what those are by looking at the markings on the original cover from the power supply. So from left to right, it's line, neutral, and ground. So it's gonna be our maroon color wire, our blue color wire, and then the ground one. Now, because the ground one has an eye loop on it, we're going to want to take this screw all the way out, put it through the eye loop, and then put it back in.
and just go ahead and push this down a little bit because we want to make sure the top cover can go back on. And the last things we need to do is use the screws that came with the meanwhile power supply and the clips to secure these MOSFETs to the casing for heat sinking. And make sure you put these on the correct direction. The correct direction is with the little short tab on this side and the longer one on the back of the MOSFET. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screw through. Hold this with a pair of pliers and we're going to tighten this down. Do not crank it down, but we want it to be snug. You want to make sure that this clamp is sitting horizontally and not tilted. If it is tilted, you can just move it a little bit by pressing on the screwdriver and you want it to look like that. And we need to put another one in the rear here. On this one, the long side is going to go over here and the short side is going to go over here. And there we go. The new power supply board is installed. It's not going to go anywhere. We got our AC connections here. We will need to hook our DC power up here with the included power cable that we give you with the kit. And again, we're going to reference the stock cover so we can see here we have line neutral ground. And then these two here are the minus and these two are the plus. So the red wire is going to go here. The black wire is going to go here. So take the pre-made cable that came with the kit, unscrew these two terminals here. Just a little bit. The red wire is going to go here. The black wire is going to go here. You want to make sure that if there are wires here, which they probably will be, you want to lift up the screw terminal a little bit more so it slides in fully and then tighten it down. So at this point, this is how your connection should look. We have our line neutral and ground connected here. We have our grounding screw installed in the grounding hole and we have our 24 volt power to feed our control board to these two terminals with the black on this terminal and the red on this terminal. These ends here have crimp ferrules pre-installed and these will go into your control board to power the board. So take the wire grommet we took off earlier and put the wires through it. We're gonna slide this down and it's gonna go into this little U-shaped opening here. Go ahead and put the lid back on. And we need to reinstall the screws we took out earlier, the two on this side and the three on this side. So at this point, we have this all swapped out. Remember to set your voltage if you didn't do so already. You can see here we still have access to the voltage selector switch if we need to change it. So we just need to reassemble this and the kit does include zip ties. So we'll attach the wires back here how they were before and then we'll be good to go. So now when you reconnect your power, you got to remember where you put the positive off of. This is our easy board in here, but it's the same as the stock board. And your red wire is going to go on this terminal and your black wire is going to go on this one. And then we'll go ahead and reconnect the grounding wire to the post right here. Go ahead and make sure that the ferrules are all the way in the terminal and then snug them up. Reconnect the grounding wire. And now we're going to put this back together completely.
Now, if your Z motor came unplugged, go ahead and reconnect it. Make sure to check all your other connections. You can see here my Y motor got unplugged. So go ahead and plug this back in. Now we need to double check the wires and put this cover back on. Remember to plug your fan back in that's on the cover. I'm gonna make sure that these wires are pushed down in here. Make sure they all stay on this side so they don't interfere with the drawer. Make sure all your wires exiting here are in this little crevice. Connect the fan. And then put your cover back on. Go ahead and take the included zip ties and we're gonna secure these wires back to the clips that they were on before. One thing I will mention is make sure the ends of the zip ties are pushed down because if you have them up, it'll actually make the printer rock. Go ahead and snip it. And now the upgrade's done. We can go ahead and plug it in and turn the machine on. You can see here it's booting up like normal. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to preheat just to make sure the power supply is working correctly. And just like that, we now have a fully upgraded Meanwhile powered power supply. And that's all there is to it. We've been running this upgraded power supply board in our Inner 2 Pro for a couple weeks here. It's been great. Now, I didn't have any issues with my stock power supply board, but I also didn't have a lot of time on the printer. We came out with this upgrade kit because a lot of people have reported to us that they've had theirs die and they were looking for replacements. And the Creality replacement is as much, if not more, than this DIY kit that we have. Personally, I like having the access to the screw terminals if I want to attach anything else to the power supply, whereas the stock power supply, as you saw, literally has the wire soldered directly to the board. So if you guys are looking to get this kit, there's a link in the video description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, happy printing. You can't hear it, but there's a cricket in my office. So go ahead and put the grounding screw God damn it. What the hell is that?